Hey guys, what's going on, man? Giant Nomad here. Your crazy, crazy stuff is happening. Crazy good stuff, too, though. I'm going to give you guys a shout out because the podcast is really taking off just in like four days. My views for this month has surpassed or, or is about to surpass the entire views for, for last month total. So thank you. Thank you so much. Fucking crazy. But this is a quick update. Uh, you know, every, every week I have a book of the week. This is a recap um, of a book from last week. And um, I'm getting into audiobooks because, like I said, I'm walking six miles a, a day. So, um, you know, between listening to music to underground hip hop artists, I'm also listening to audiobooks. You know what I'm saying? And I've always loved to read. So I don't give a fuck if you think this is cool or not. I like it. This is um, from the couple that's on HGTV. It's called The Magnolia Story. They do the um, flipping the houses it's called Fixer Upper. And man, you know. I went into it because I actually liked the show. Like, I always did. Like, I always thought it was cool. They had a cool dynamic with them. You know what I'm saying? A diverse, multicultural family on TV is always good to see. Especially, like, from, from the South. So, you know what I'm saying? They're from Texas and stuff. So, that's always good to see. But the um, the book itself, you know, um, the way Joanna Gaines tells her story and how um, Chip, you know, injects here and there with his funnies. It's uh, it's insane that they went through a real struggle. You know what I'm saying? You, if you got you have to pick up the book. I'm really I really I really do highly recommend it because it talks about their struggle. It talks about their struggle together as a couple, going into a family, making some moves that they felt it was kind of well that they felt it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Some moves that may have set them back. You know, in a book, you know, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but. But Chip buys a a pretty much a a, a boat that has holes in it, and somebody yo, we're gonna live in this shit. Like he's gangster as fuck, and and she was just crazy. Like what are you, what are you fucking talking about? Like you know, so just regular couple shit. You know, what I'm saying like they're total polar opposites. I'm sure whoever you're with, you're not the same person because it's kind of boring if you want to date you. You know, if you're trying to date yourself, then just be solo. You know what I'm saying? But man i can't say enough about this book like um really per- it, not that it put things in perspective it's not that it it, it, it showed me that other people have issues because i already know that i'm 41 years old i already know people got issues but it does put something in light of how they didn't give up on each other that's the biggest thing right there a lot of folks you know t- things get tough they tend to just walk away and not surpass and thrive past that as a couple as a unit and this book was amazing i think what i'm gonna do is definitely have my wife lovely listen to this book and in our podcast we have a podcast together called couples corner i think we're gonna dissect that because it's, it's hella good like you know it shows me that as well your work ethic is important and because of my work ethic the podcast has been doing well it's been succeeding you know what i'm saying and because the way Chip and Joanne just kept on feeding one another, feeding one another, feeding one another, no matter what came through. And there was some bullshit that happened. You know what I'm saying? There was some shit that went down with them. And they still fought through. And then the TV show came about. And man, and even for for, for Joanne, uh, Joanna to uh, um, give up her shop, closing her shop down for the betterment of her family. To stay home with her family was huge because that's what everyone's looking for that work life balance which we all know work life balance does not fucking exist right so you have to really pick and choose and what percentage you're gonna give of the other right so you're gonna give more to your family you're gonna give more to your career and how you're gonna work that out and i talked about this pre- previous another podcast about you know what your balance could look like and um she chose her family she shut down her business she felt it was the right thing for her to do as her kids were young and she wanted to spend time with them. But then she didn't stop working, of course. No, she still worked on the side. She kind of finagled her business in a way to where she had these kind of trunk shows three or four times a year. So she still had her contacts. She still had her old customers and she was still contact, which is genius. And, and that's the whole part about networking. I was like, you know, there was also some networking pieces in there. And I talk about this because as I read these books and, and you, you listen to all these folks talking about their success rates, it's all about who you connect with, all about who you're networking with. It's all about who's going to get you um, that 
that next person that may know something. And that's how people do favors for another. You have that bartering system. You trade information. You, you trade who you know uh, to get what you want. It's, it's, it's definitely networking as a currency. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not sure why people aren't putting it in that light. That yo, know, that networking is a huge, huge fucking currency. And because she kept her network going up, her trunk show still did well, even though it was only three, four times a year, which is fantastic. She still bought product on the side. But to come full circle. She was able to open up her shop again, but bigger and better. And they actually even had a headquarters. And this is not unknown information. It is all over there, the TV show. Um, but the book was fantastic, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big hip-hop head and everything like that. Straight from Brooklyn from Best Eye. But as I've grown, as I've looked into, you know, I've always read books. And I, as I got into this one, this was a fantastic, fantastic read. You know, it wasn't about business. It was about someone's story, personal life, that just so happened to involve business and how they both were ingrained into entrepreneurship from their parents um, and how they took that on and how it was rough. It was difficult. It was not easy. And chances had to be taken. And they took some fucking chances. And they, 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 they were in debt even when they were leveling up. They were still broke. They didn't even know how they can pay their own fucking mortgage. And they were still leveling up. Um, but their path took them to this place. It, it made them go to this zone within themselves to keep hungry. And I'm sure it was difficult. And the book, you can hear this. You can keep, you can imagine it because I do encourage you to get the audio book. Because as, as, as Chip calls her JoJo... The way she tells the story and, and Chip as well, he by him being so spontaneous in his actions. Um that now at the later stages of their of their, of their entrepreneurship careers, like he's taking kind of a, a step back now. But because of spon- spontaneity, it has gotten him in some trouble over the over the years. But it's an amazing thing, you know, because they they balance each other out as as Joanna is more conservative and Chip is just more outrageous with uh, with his endeavors, and it works out though. Um, and they moved so much, like I, you know, every time they had a place, you know, he would say, "Yo, this isn't this isn't home. We're gonna flip this joint." So, you know, don't get too comfortable with it. They did get comfortable with one home that they loved, and it was it was a really badass house. It was an older house, and she did her thing with it, but it became more of a museum than a home, just to a point to where she she just plopped on the couch, and um, she wondered, wait, where are my kids playing at? Because the kids couldn't do anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like She was telling the kids, don't do this, don't do that, and the kids didn't have their own space. And uh, Chip went up selling that house and bought some some 19 uh, house that was built in 1981 with no character no nothing just a real plain jane kind of cookie cut house and he was like yo do your thing with this if you do your thing with this then we can really make it big and um she did she took it as a challenge she hated it of course she was like yo i hate this shit this is bullshit but because of the move that he did and they downgraded it really put them in a way because what happened was they were still this was when the housing market was going to shit. And it didn't hit Texas as of yet. As it hit the East Coast and the West Coast so hard. But it was making its way there. And um, he had the foresight, yo, let's sell this shit now. Downgrade. Stash this money. So when shit does hit hard, it would be good. And he was right. He made, the, he, he made the right call. He made the perfect call for that. So that is where you have to really understand how you flow with it. And how you make that shit happen for yourself. Time and time again, you really have to make sure that you make the right moves and you see what's coming up on the pathway so you can make your adjustments. Because sometimes your path isn't always straight. Sometimes you're going to have to make a left or right turn to get back on path again. And that's what exactly what he did. That's what they did together. So great, great book. Like I said, I do suggest the audio book. Um, it's called The Magnolia Story by Chip and Joanna Gaines. Um, and it's narrated by both of them as well, so it's fantastic. Um, yeah, man, great book. You know, it's just very inspiring. And like I said, if you're a couple, you listen to this, this is fantastic. And if you're not, you still can get some great 
information about entrepreneurship, the struggle, just making shit happen for yourself. So just go check it out. Highly recommend it. I'm going to come up with my next, my, next, my next book of the week, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday is always going to be book of the week. So you guys get that. What I'm going to be popping off. You see that on my IG. And uh, talk to you soon. See ya.